It was early Sunday morning, and the Raggy Dolls had decided to organise a treasure hunt. Hi-Fi and Back to Front had gone ahead with the clues, while the others were busy making a slap-up picnic lunch. I adore solving clues, said Mr Marmalade, the factory cat. I'm curious by nature, you know. I do hope Hi-Fi and Back to Front have thought up some good ones. They won't make the clues too hard, said Satsack. Oh, why not? said Mr. Marmalade, slightly disappointed. Sad Sack smiled. Because if we don't find them, they won't get any lunch. Meanwhile, Hi Fi and Back to Front were explaining the game to Pumpernickel, the scarecrow. Oh, I see, he said. What's the treasure then? We haven't really got any treasure, said Back to Front. The fun is in solving the clues. And m m, -m, -m making them up, added Hi-Fi. Would you mind if we put one of the clues in your pocket? asked Back to Front. Not at all, said the Scarecrow. Be my guest. It'll make my day very interesting. Back in the canteen, the others decided that it was time to read the first clue. What does it say? said Sadzak eager to have lunch as soon as possible. Princess gave a little cough. Ahem. My first his D, and rhymes with luck. My second with beyond. If you can read this sound, you'll need to solve clue number one. The raggy dolls were puzzled. It really is quite simple, said Mr Marmalade. My first is D and rhymes with luck. It must be Duck. Of course, said Dotty. And the second word rhymes with beyond. It must be pond. Duck pond, exclaimed Lucy. How clever. Yes, but what about the rest of the clue, said Sadzak. Oh, we can solve that when we get there, said Dotty. The Raggy Dolls hurried to the duck pond. All the way there, Mr. Marmalade amused himself pouncing at butterflies. Dotty read the second part of the clue again. If you can read this sound, you'll need to solve clue number one. I have many talents, said Mr. Marmalade, but alas, reading is not one of them. Maybe you don't need to be able to read, said Lucy. Maybe it's something that sounds like read. But of course, said Claude. Look in the reeds. Brilliant, said Dotty. Keeping a safe distance from Mr Marmalade, the ducks watched as the raggy dolls searched the reeds by the side of the duck pond. Here it is, called Sadzak, holding up another envelope. The raggy dolls quickly opened it. This time, Lucy read the clue. He'll welcome you with open arms, but your thinking must be quick. You have no key, you have no lock, but what else can you pick? It was a long time before the Raggy Dolls realised that the only person they knew who always had his arms open was Pumpernickel. The old scarecrow chuckled when he saw the Raggy Dolls come running towards him. Ha ha ha! I was just wondering when you lot would turn up. Please, puffed Sadzak. Where's the next clue? I'm getting hungry. My lips are sealed, said Pumpernickel. Sworn to secrecy, I am. Quite right, said Dotty. Come on, chaps, let's put our thinking caps on. She read aloud the second part of the clue. 
You have no key. You have no lock. But what else can you pick? Sad Sack could only think of nose, and nearly said so, but on second thoughts he kept silent. Apples, said Lucy. Flowers, said Princess. Pumpernickel began to laugh, but just then Mr Marmalade pounced in, making them all jump. My word, said Pumpernickel. Where did you spring from? Allow me to introduce myself, said the ginger cat. After all, we both scare birds. The name's Marmalade. Not my choice, I hasten to add. Pleased to meet you, said the scarecrow. I got a daft name and all. It's Pumpernickel. Dotty was getting impatient. Well, now we've all been introduced, perhaps we can get on with solving this clue. Let's hear it again, said Mr Marmalade. Dotty recited. You have no key, you have no lock, but what else can you pick? Have you tried pocket, said Mr Marmalade? You know, as in pick pocket. Very clever, said the Scarecrow, as the Ragged Dolls took the third clue out of his pocket. Claude opened it. What does it say? said Dotty. Claude frowned. C'est une maison. It is just an house. The others gathered round. On the piece of paper was a drawing of a house. Whose house is that? said Lucy. And where is it? added Princess. This is even harder than the others, thought Sad Sack. Mr Marmalade, who was rolling on the ground at their feet, looked up and said quite casually, There appears to be something on the back. Claude quickly turned the paper over. It's just a tree, said Dotty. How does that help us? No one knew. Hmm, how curious, said Mr Marmalade thoughtfully. First of all, a house, and then a tree. But it could easily have been a tree, and then a house. Curious. The Ragged Dolls looked at each other. A tree house! Come on, said Dotty. Pumpernickel watched them go. <laughs> Clever stuff, he chuckled. Very smart, those Ragged Dolls. <laughs> In no time at all, the Ragged Dolls had reached the tree house. At the foot of the secret stairs, they found yet another envelope. Not another one, complained Sad Sack. I'm starving. We all are, said Dotty, tearing open the envelope. She read out the clue. Where have you been, you silly bunch? There are no more clues. Hurry up with lunch. Come on, called back to front from the treehouse window. We're starving too. After a hearty lunch, Dotty raised her teacup. Well, here's to a very successful hunt. Well done, Hi-Fi, and back to front. Lucy giggled. <laughs> you sound like a clue. <laughs> but they all agreed it was a pity there wasn't any treasure. I think Mr Marmalade is our treasure, said Sad Sack. How kind, said the cat. But I'm curious to know why you should wish to honour me in this way. Quite simple, said Sadzak. It's because without your help, this lunch would have turned into supper. The Raggy Dolls laughed again and toasted their newly found treasure, Mr. Marmalade. It's not much of a life when you're just a pretty face. Just to be whoever you are is no disgrace. Look around and you will find people of every kind, like the Raggy Dolls, Raggy Dolls, Raggy Dolls, Raggy Dolls. Dolls like you and me. Raggy Dolls, Raggy Dolls, Raggy Dolls, Raggy Dolls. made him perfectly. So if you're not at ease with your knobbly knees and your fingers are all thumbs, 